Welcome back to The Lead. We are coming to you live from Orlando, Florida. We're just yards from the scene of a mass murder, where minutes ago, President Obama and Vice President Biden laid 49 roses, one for each of the 49 victims gunned down by the Orlando terrorist, and where investigators continue to dig for clues in this nightclub massacre. Today, we're getting a closer look than ever before at the horrors that unfolded early Sunday morning, new video capturing the terrifying moments inside the club's bathroom. <laughs> this video is showing dozens of people hiding in that bathroom, wondering if they would ever make it out alive. All the while, the gunman Omar Mateen had isolated himself in the other bathroom just next door during the tense three-hour standoff with police. We are now learning that both before and during the massacre, the mass murder vented on Facebook. Also, for the first time, we are hearing the voice of the terrorist himself. I want to bring in CNN Justice correspondent Pamela Brown. She's been covering this from the beginning. Pamela, we're going to hear from President Obama in just a few moments, but, but I understand you have new reporting about who else he was communicating with from inside the attack. That's right. In fact, we have learned that he, uh, he was communicating with his wife, Jim. He left the house that day, told his wife, according to our sources, he was going to see a friend, but she was suspicious that he was actually going to launch an attack. She apparently tried to talk him out of it, and she began calling him frantically after the news broke that there was a shooting at Pulse nightclub. She was calling him frantically. Apparently, according to our sources, he didn't answer, but he texted her at around 4 a.m. when he was holed up in that bathroom saying, did you see the news? And at some point, she responded, I love you. Um, the wife is still saying that she did not know about his specific plan. She still claims that she tried to talk him out of this, but she did not call police, and tonight she remains under scrutiny. <laughs> In the middle of the chaos inside Pulse nightclub, CNN has learned the gunman and his wife communicated by text message, according to law enforcement sources. She has told investigators she had a suspicion when he left the house on Saturday he was going to launch an attack, even though he told her he was going to visit a friend. Everybody just get out to get paid. Like We're hearing from Omar Mateen for the first time. This documentary from 2011 about the BP oil spill shows Mateen working as a security guard. Once people get laid off here, it's going to suck for them. They want more disaster to happen because that's where their money making is. <laughs> Sources tell CNN in the weeks leading up to the attack, Mateen began spending a significant amount of money, including to buy weapons used for the attack. The couple shot for ammunition together on at least one occasion, and they went to Pulse nightclub for what investigators believe was a reconnaissance mission. But she claims she didn't know of his specific plans and tried to talk him out of doing anything violent. I can assure you that if anybody um, knew that this was going to happen and was a, a participant and helped it, that that person will be prosecuted. A letter from Senator Ron Johnson to Facebook says Mateen searched the site during the rampage for news on the shooting and even allegedly posted, in the next few days you will see attacks from the Islamic State in the USA. The FBI is still trying to verify those Facebook accounts. We're also learning more about how police handled the chaotic situation. Police say an officer who was working off duty at the club immediately exchanged gunfire with the shooter, but was outgunned and had to wait for backup. They went in right away, exchanged gunfire with the suspect within those first few minutes, and that's important because this caused the suspect to stop shooting and retreat to the bathroom where he was now isolated and contained. From that point on, until 5 o'clock in the morning, there were no shots fired. <laughs> While the gunman was holed up in the bathroom, the police chief says officers were pulling victims out as fast as they could. Hostage negotiators were able to make contact with him. We had information that he was going to put explosive vests on four people and then um, blow the place up in 15 minutes. Uh, by that time, we were already set uh, with our explosive breach. When I arrived on scene... A first responder telling CNN about the harrowing experience. It was kind of dark. You know, um, I had this disco light still going, um, and I just began yelling, hey guys, come on up, come on up, come on up, you know, we got you, we got you. And just unfortunately, it took a minute, but realized that they weren't faking, it's just, they couldn't get up. Investigators are still trying to determine the motive for the nightclub attack, and if anyone, including his wife, could have done anything to stop it.
And we know that a few weeks before this shooting, the gunman actually went to a store to try to buy body armor, but he was told that the, the store owner said that they didn't sell body armor. And now we're learning, according to the owner of this store, uh, they claim that they called police, called law enforcement, because they felt like the gunman was acting suspicious. Now, we've reached out to law enforcement, and so, so far there is no record of any call being made by this store alerting authorities to any suspicious behavior.